Watch, WatcherTV.com. <laughs> In all seriousness, we, we really couldn't be more excited for you guys to join us on this next chapter, hopefully. Uh, we'd love for you guys to come along with us. But at the same time, this is our final goodbye to YouTube. Um, and you know, if it's our goodbye to you, I hope it's not, but if it is, I do want to say thank you uh, for supporting us all along the way. Your viewership has allowed us to do all these wonderful things that we've done these past four years. And uh, we hope that you'll uh, come along for the ride. And help us continue to build. Yeah. Build this thing out even bigger. Um, that's the hope, at least. But either way, it's been fun. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Well, if you're looking for a video on how to alienate your audience and destroy your YouTube following, this is the one for you. This is about Watcher saying goodbye to YouTube. And I have a personal stake in this because I myself have been a fan of Watcher and BuzzFeed Unsolved for years now. I want to say probably close to 10 years that I've been watching these guys. So if you're not familiar with them, these guys started at BuzzFeed. They've grown into their own and they have their own business called Watcher Entertainment, which has several subscriptions um, that you can follow along with. You can watch their ghost files show, their mystery files. They have a show called Puppet History. They have some food and travel shows as well. But my favorites have always been the mystery and the ghost files. Those two have really bonded me and my husband. They've made for some great laughs during tough times. It's been the kind of show that you can go and turn to when you want to watch something kind of spooky, but also just feels like two friends having the best time laughing together and endlessly coming up with crazy theories about ghosts, aliens, UFOs, and unsolved cases. So if you're not familiar with them, they have really grown a lot. Since leaving BuzzFeed five years ago, that's when they started Watcher Entertainment. And as you can see, now that they are saying goodbye to YouTube, there's a lot of drama and complications that are following. There have been several articles coming out about them. There are already other reaction channels discussing the fallout from making this announcement that they're leaving YouTube. And it's not just that they're leaving YouTube, but it's the way they went about announcing that they plan to leave YouTube. So let me begin to just fill you in a little bit on what exactly is happening here. So the guys have said that they really wanna create high quality content. Their goal has been to create content that is of Netflix quality. However, this is not going to work for them because the overhead cost is simply too much. They've become a bigger business. They're employing 25 people or more. Some people are saying it's up to 33 people technically by now. Um, regardless, they also said that essentially it cost them upwards of 150 k to produce one episode of the show for their YouTube channel. And understandably, that's a lot of money. However, people watched them years ago when they didn't have this kind of production value. And people would still be watching them today if they had the production value they had six years ago. If it was just two guys sitting in a basement, writing on a chalkboard, being goofy, having the bare minimum graphics and animations and everything, people would still be watching because people fell in love with Ryan and Jane for who they are. Now, besides Ryan and Shane, there's a third person involved, and that's Stephen Lynn. He's the person kind of more behind the scenes of the show. They made him CEO, and a lot of people are saying that Stephen Lynn is more to blame, but let's be honest, all three are equally to blame for this very poor decision making in their business. Um, I have never seen so many people agreeing in a YouTube comment section in my life. I literally spent an hour and a half yesterday when the video came out scrolling all the comments and I could not find a single positive comment. Every comment was someone saying the same thing. So what happened? This channel had the most loyal following ever. Everyone loved these guys. They've never really ever done any wrong. They've never really had any controversies worth talking about. <laughs> so what's the big deal here? Well, we're going to get into it. I'm going to take you guys through some of the comments that I've also seen on their Instagram, on their Reddit, on their Twitter, on their 
other blogs and social media sites as well. Um, and we're going to start by looking at uh, the comments from a lot of people on Twitter. But before we get into that, let's start with looking at Stephen's post because Stephen Lynn is the only one out of the three who has made a semi more personal post about leaving the channel. And I want to share with you guys what he had to say. So here's Stephen Lynn on Twitter. He said, to be honest, I'm still kind of processing it all. I wrote some stuff out last night in Tumblr right before the announcement. And if you're interested, you can read that here. The night before Watcher's big announcement, 41824. No spoilers here, just a bit of reflection. 12 years ago, I started blogging on this Tumblr page to capture my feelings and where I was at. Even though so much has changed, it also feels like nothing at all has changed. Back then, I was a kid from Ohio, just trying to make a living off YouTube. At the time, I didn't even know how to operate a camera, how to act on screen, or even how to edit a video but I knew that I loved the process of making videos and that propelled me day by day. When I started making YouTube videos in 2012, I gave myself four years before I'd call it quits. Four years to make a living or I'd reconsider and find a different career path. Looking back, I didn't realize how close I cut it, but it really wasn't until three years in that I made a hit and I thank God every day. Because it was some combination of luck, hard work and divine intervention, that somehow led me to work at BuzzFeed, create Worth It, meet Ryan and Shane, launch Watcher, and well, the rest is history. That being said, I'm at a crossroads here again. Tomorrow is kind of a big day for me and our team. It's nerve-wracking to take risks at this stage of my career and my company's life. Who knows where things will go? Will we succeed or will we fall flat on our face? I truly don't know. But no matter what, I just wanted to take this time to dwell in a place of gratitude. Thank you to all the people who have supported my career, Team Watcher, and the shows we make. I can't believe this is my job and that I get to wake up and do this every single day. Speaking of job... Thank you so much to my team at Watcher. I love you and I'm so grateful for all of you. I can't believe how hard you all work day in and day out to make the beautiful videos and shows that we do. Thank you to my wife and to my family and friends. Thank you to our investors, mentors, and thank you to God. For some reason, this general entry came out like an acceptance speech at the People's Choice Awards. Whoops, I honestly don't even know what I wanted to get across when I started writing. But that's it for now. Tomorrow is a big day, and I don't know what this means for myself or for Watchers. But what I do know is that it's been the best five years of my life building Watcher, and I thank God every day for that. See you on the other side. Steven. Here are some of the comments in reply to that. This is a bad business choice. It will cost you your audience. Please rethink. Respectfully, you would have an idea of the outcome if you did market research or even just did an audience survey. Your expectations and perceptions of your audience is clearly very detached. Succeed or fall flat on your faces. Seeing the reaction to what this news has turned out to be looks like it's going to be the latter. Bro wants to get paid even more to be filmed eating expensive food. All of this comes off as so out of touch. You've lost so much respect from your loyal audience who got you where you are. Hope it was worth it. This is going to make Steven's new show look so out of touch, especially if it's shot the same way as the WTV announcement video. Slow-mo shots of Steven eating Wagyu, flying, driving a Tesla, drinking wine. Yeah, woof, hits different now. There's him eating $2,000 pizza. Right, how are you going to have a show about eating really expensive food but then say you're working for a company that's not making enough money. Make it make sense. People are also replying to Steven on Twitter. They're saying, Steven, I can't afford groceries. How do you expect me to be able to afford $60 a year? I hope you read all of these replies. Man, we love y'all, but this ain't it. I don't know, brother. It seems like you're out of touch with your fan base, especially when y'all are trying to go international with the audience. $6 a, a month isn't cheap, especially when the viewers are all over the world. Wish y'all the best, but this ain't it. One of the worst decisions ever. Please see the comments and reverse this decision before you alienate your audience even more. The beta test soft launch is gonna flop. Yeah. As of today, which is more than 24 hours since this video has been released, they have not said anything. Um, it looks like the Reddit is starting to go into damage control because I'm starting to see Reddit posts being deleted. So I'm kind of glad I have some of those archived here. Uh, I want to share some of them with you in case they are no longer available. 
Um, so this one says, so out of touch. Why the fuck would I pay Stephen Lim to eat golden caviar and have the same boring reaction every single time in the middle of a cost of living crisis? How he became the CEO makes no sense. Literally nobody is subscribed to Watcher for his content. Furthermore, nobody wants better camera quality. We want to laugh at two idiots finding out whether or not there are ghosts and being silly. That's basically virtually what they did at BuzzFeed, and it was great. They need to realize that they are YouTubers, not directors, not TV stars. We expect YouTube quality, and we expect it to be free with ads. We're fine with the ads. In fact, we're fine with even watching more ads for the same content. But we just aren't able to pay $6 a month or $60 a year for yet another streaming service. This seems to be the running theme amongst all of the comments. So let's read through some more. I think at this point, there's a conflict between what the fans want to see and what they want to produce. Lots of people are saying that they don't care about the production value. They want the guys hunting ghosts drunk on an iPhone camera. And they, you know, but they themselves as creators don't want to do that. They want to flex their filmmaker skills. They want pretty sets. They want graphics. They want higher production value. It might not be our priority, but it's theirs. And one I'd bet that they're not willing to compromise on. Making low quality content is probably going to leave them creatively unfulfilled. It's a stalemate between what they want to get out of their careers and what we can give them. Here's a post that says, I can, but I won't. And you shouldn't either. It is true, a lot of us could technically spare $6 a month, but no, I won't. Like many fans, I've followed them since the early BuzzFeed days, and what drew me in was the level of relatability and feeling like we are watching real people. The illusion has been shattered instantly, and then there's the realization that these people aren't, you know, really any different. I won't put my hard-earned money into the pockets of a company that has disregarded their fan base without hesitation so that they can spend beyond their means, especially to fund shows that cost a lot more than they are worth if the views are worth anything at all. They are truly living in la-la land. Someone says, no statement? It's been 10 hours. I'm flabbergasted at how Watcher has handled this entire fiasco. We know they are seeing the backlash and probably getting a lot of it sent directly to them. And yet none of them are acknowledging it. Not even a, we hear you and we're listening. Did the PR manager fall into a sinkhole or something? This silence is what's really making me realize they were way too optimistic and had no idea people would be against this. If they would have been a little bit unsure, I think they would have probably had a backup plan in place. I feel like they're silent because they've gone into crisis mode and have no idea what to do. Oh, to be a fly on the wall for this. It really is shocking that they thought this would fly or that they went with this instead of like moving headquarters to somewhere more affordable. To be a fly on the wall after their announcement. I'm so curious how they took the backlash of this announcement. Just to be in the room with them and to see their reactions right away and hours later. I wouldn't be surprised if they had certain plans today and those plans either change. Now they're going into feeling worse about this announcement. I just can't see Ryan and Shane being okay with all the negative reception to the move or being able to just go along with their day like all as well. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I would think that, you know, they're human beings with feelings like the rest of us. Of course, they're not going to be okay with this. Um, this is absolutely heartbreaking. It's devastating to fans and I'm sure to them as well. Um, the likes and dislikes on their YouTube videos are insane right now. Um, everybody is disliking the video. It's really crazy, but completely understandable. Some of the other posts are people saying they've unsubscribed because they couldn't imagine that they'd ever see these guys do something like this. And they never imagined they would have to attract their support from them either, but they feel like that's the right thing to do. Some people have asked, uh, what do 20 staff members do at Watcher? People have asked, um... Is anyone else watching their subscriber count drop? Was subbed from the week they launched. Unsubbed already. Sick of this. Same. Saw the announcement video and immediately unsubscribed on YouTube. Me too. Such a dumb decision. I wonder how they convinced themselves that this would go well. Understand that these guys came from BuzzFeed. So how did they manage to go and form their own company and then do exactly what BuzzFeed did and ended up failing? BuzzFeed died because they overhired. They were located in LA, New York. They couldn't sustain their headcount and their ad revenue. How did these people who work at BuzzFeed when it collapsed manage to do exactly the same thing 
as their prior employers. This announcement video is like a perfect encapsulation of their blatant mismanagement. They hired 20 plus staff to do shows that are mostly two to three people sitting in a room talking. They leased massive office space in Hollywood of all places. They've opened a Patreon, a merch store, collected AdSense, done five minute ad reads, done live shows, and still don't understand that they are the problem, not YouTube's monetization. I know it sucks firing people. I know it probably felt good to give jobs to people that they used to work with at BuzzFeed, but Mystery Files doesn't need a set designer, costume designer, two videographers, an audio tech, an editor, multiple writers, and the hosts. Even Ghost Files does not need that much staff, and this is not a year-round show. They need to cut head count by more than half, terminate their lease, move to a cheaper space in a cheaper city, start blasting out quality content as fast as humanly possible. This is the only way that they can correct course. I agree that their sets are gorgeous, but they don't need them. Hiring a designer seems like a ridiculous expense for just starting out. What else is wild is that they just made this announcement before going on tour again. So yes, they do live shows, they tour. So I've actually had the pleasure of seeing them live and it was a ton of fun. I would do it again. Um, but these people that are planning on seeing them next week now feel very uncomfortable, feeling awkward, feeling a lot of different feelings about whether or not they want to keep their tickets, get refunds. Um, people are just feeling the tension. They're not sure where things are going to go from here. And if they planned on doing any sort of meet and greet with them, it's probably extra awkward now. Um, I do have to say that this was very poor planning. Um, in this announcement, not knowing how it would be re received. So I do feel like this is going to affect their live shows and how the audiences are a little bit. Um, maybe not too much because I'm sure there's still going to be a lot of people that haven't heard about this, don't know about this um, by the time they go and see that show. But I guess we're going to have to see how that kind of plays out. But people are posting about it. They're posting about it on Reddit and they're asking other people, other fans, are you still going to go? Are you going to get a refund? Do you feel weird? Do you feel let down? Because a lot of people feel like they got kicked in the gut by this news. You know, it's understandable. Someone else says they're going to fail. I love them so much, but this decision is so stupid. I'm so disappointed. They just recreated BuzzFeed behind a paywall. If all you know is BuzzFeed, I guess eventually you just turn into BuzzFeed, but worse. Anybody else anxious about attending their London show next week? I've been excited to go to this show since it was announced. Now I feel like it's going to have a really uncomfortable side to it, unless they are going to say, psych, at the show. I don't really know how I feel. Yeah, exactly. This person even states, I feel like we're going through some kind of breakup. Oh, that is relatable. Someone replied, I would pay $6 to be a fly on the wall at one of their upcoming live shows. Someone says, I'm anxious and also unsure of how to feel about everything currently. I'm still going to go, but I'm definitely not as excited as I had been before. I'm just nervously thinking about how things are going to play out, especially during the Q&A segment. And as someone who has been to their live show and has seen their Q&A segment, they normally do have a lot of people come up to the stage, ask a lot of questions, give them hugs, take selfies, autographs, all kinds of things during the show. So it is going to be interesting to see how that plays out for people that go. If you go, please comment down below. Let me know what you thought, how they interacted with the fans. Did they answer any questions? We are going to want to know. We're going to want to keep up on this story. This post is basically saying the problem is in the way that they went about it. Telling people all of a sudden that you're no longer going to be accessible to a majority of your audience if they don't pay up is pretty out of touch. I'm not mad about the streaming service. I think it's a natural flow for them, but the timing and how they went about it is what's rubbing me the wrong way most of all. Exactly. I think it was the delivery. It was not asking your audience before deciding to do it. And they could have added it as something that was optional that you decided to do in addition to continuing what they're already doing and just give it a little bit of time and then maybe over a period of a year or two slowly transition more content to their own platform and at that point make an announcement like this instead of just pretty much slamming us all in the face with it like surprise. So as a viewer myself I'm just going to wait and see how things play out right now. I'm going to Hope that they walk this back, offer an apology. I think the best thing they could do is realize that they've made a mistake. And being accountable and apologizing is the best course of action from this point out. I think that they could definitely consider offering YouTube memberships. They could add more options to their Patreon. They can do so many other things, but not this. 
Everything should be how it is. Now, if they are not fulfilled in their careers by that, then I guess as an audience, we'll all have to accept that they just need to move on for themselves. If they can't find fulfillment of their passions and pursue the things that they want in life by continuing to just do YouTube, well then, I guess we'll just part ways and those of us on YouTube who are fulfilled by it will continue to watch YouTube, create on YouTube, and be a part of YouTube. I am grateful to YouTube for giving me the ability to become a creator. I'm a pretty new creator to the platform, so if you've watched this video and enjoyed my content, please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below because if you're a fan like I am, this is close to your heart and you've definitely been going through a lot of the feels the last 24 hours as I have. I look forward to seeing you guys in future videos and making more content like this. I know this was totally different than my previous content, but I would love to bring you more content just like this. So stay tuned, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Basically, by making fart noises yeah. and funny faces. Ooh, ta -ta -ho. <laughs> <laughs>